Before we get into today's video, I just want to say thank you to our Patreons. Your support helps the channel and helps fund the giveaways on the channel. If you're interested in becoming one, link down below. But without further ado, guys, let's jump right into it. What's going on, guys, and welcome back. So we got some more decks for you guys. Like I said, I'm testing a whole bunch of different things for our set championship weekend coming up pretty quickly. Um... I am an aggro player at heart, so a lot of these first initial decks are going to be aggro decks. We will branch off into some others. Uh, let me know down below if there's certain decks you'd like me to try out. I will do it as I can. But this is our new format. I think I kind of like how it went. And we're going to go through some highlighted cards, the deck profile, matchups, and then a couple gameplay um, replays. So without further ado, we are playing Amber Steel Aggro. Not songs, not focused or worried about songs like at all so you can potentially throw your opponent off that way when they see your color combination and they're thinking you're going for songs um they may mulligan and try to get things bare necessities will still hit you because we are playing some damage cards um but those ursulas against emerald they're going to be pretty not super impactful we do still play some songs so they do have targets however taking advantage of things like baboom and smash to allow your early plays to stay on board and to control your board state. Your early plays either apply pressure or they get into your big hitters like your Robin Hood, your Queen, your Kida, things like that. So we're trying to win quick. I wouldn't call this a hyper aggro deck, but it's definitely an aggro deck. In addition, we do play a card like Doc, Leader of the Seven Dwarves, who allows you to get into your bigger characters a little quicker because when he quests, you pay one less for your next character. Let's go jump into the overall deck. The deck comes in as $230. Um, keeping in mind, the vast majority of that, as in over half of it, is just the Robin Hood package. If you don't have that, we could find a replacement. Ask me down below, and I will work on it. Um, but yeah, if you take out the Robin Hood package, this deck is under $100, so pretty budget in that regard. We're playing four Lilo, four Queens, and four Robin Hoods as our one drops. There are 12 of them. 18 twos, 16 threes. Agro decks, I like to be heavy on them early costs. We are playing only eight non-inkable cards, so that also means you're going to be able to have, well, plenty of resources to play the game. In our two drop spot, it's pretty much bodyguards, but we also play our Wendy Darling, who can go ahead and quest for multiple while taking three willpower to survive certain hits. Uh, so Lilo is our agro card early. And then again, Queen and Robin Hood allow you to shift into your bigger plays. Simba and Kida also allowing you to play Bodyguards turn 2 pretty frequently. Turn 3, you have your Dock, so you can go ahead and ramp. You have your Benja to get rid of those Blue Red and Sapphire Steel item decks and take care of them. So we're playing 4 of him, and the fact that he quests for 2 just helps in general. We are playing 2 more Princes, so 10 total Bodyguards. But he also quests for two. You notice that Doc also quests for two. So, so far our cards are quest for two, shift target, shift target, bodyguard, quest for two, bodyguard, quest for two, quest for two, quest for two, and then our shifters who all quest for two. Kita is just insane in the fact that her minus three to everything gives you essentially a free turn to play the game. The queen commanding presence not only shifts on turn two, she can also give the plus 4, minus 4 to allow you to deal with your opponent's boards very effectively. If you pair the queen with something like Robin Hood Champion of Sherwood, you're in a very good spot. She will boost him to 7, take away 4 from your opponent, which means his 6 willpower is going to last a long time. In addition to that, when he challenges and takes out those characters, you're gaining that 2 lore in the process anyway. So the queen paired with Robin Hood just puts in so much work. In order to maintain our board presence though, we do have to have some type of removal. So we're playing two Babooms and four Smashes. Smash being pretty key because it takes out things like Ursula and more importantly, the Ariel. I think Ariel and Steel Song is possibly the best deck right now. It's seeing more play and more success and it's moving up and it's definitely something to keep an eye on. I think that that deck is overall, when piloted correctly, the best deck of the format. The bare necessities, let the storm rage on, and then along came Zeus. 
So like I said, we are playing songs, so we do get hit by things like Ursula, but we're not playing 18 songs. We're playing eight. So less likely to have them. Bare Necessities obviously gives you that hand knowledge of your opponent, while also potentially discarding a card. Storm Rage on is damage plus draw, and then also the Zeus obviously is your big damage that you can sing with your Kita, Queen, or your Robin Hood. So let's go ahead and jump on into some of our matchups. Ruby Amethyst. These deck lists are going to kind of say the same for a little bit. As I see more updated ones, I will just grab them off Facebook and update it. The point of this is to just show the deck and talk about it while just having a nice visual there instead of like just repeated card, fade, card, fade, card, fade like we did the first time. So we see things like our one drops with the Olaf or Fiki. Keep an eye out, Chernabog's followers is seeing more play. In addition to that, you have that Pinocchio on two that can um, make your readied character exerted. So they can take it out. Uh, things like Madame M. Fox and Maui have Rush. The Crab allowing them to deal with your bigger threats like your Robin Hood in a much easier fashion. In addition to that, things like Madame Medusa will take out your Robin Hood fairly easy. Unfortunately, that card is very, very strong. So what do we have to worry about in this matchup? What do you need to take out and, like I said, worry about? Well, Hmm, where we got our bodyguards, not necessarily worried about challenging. I mean, Prince bodyguard is nice with the resist one, but the Mim Fox still takes it out in one single swing while only taking one damage. Um, you have, they don't have a whole lot of like swinging effect damage. So your Queens, your Kitas, your Robin Hood survive that way. The biggest things I guess I would look out for is the Fox and Maui because of the rush to get around your Kita. The uh, Madame Medusa because she can take out your Kita or your Robin Hood. And actually after you drop Kita, if they come back with Madame Medusa, they can take out anything because you lost three on everything. So do watch out for that Madame Medusa once you get near that turn six range. That's something where if you can use your bare necessities and see their hand, you can try to play around or play through most effectively. And then also, like I said, the Merlin Crab, just giving that plus three is something to keep an eye on, as well as that Maui Fish Hook. Steel Song, so a color mirror match, but not quite the same plan mirror match. What are things I worry about here? Um, your Baboom on the Cinderella is actually very helpful because one, you could potentially get rid of the shift target, and two, you get rid of that three cost singer because Raging Fire and Storm Rage On are just cards that early game they control the tempo, especially when they're singing them with their one drop. Aerial, uh, getting hit by your smash, that's pretty big. Um, other decks I've played, it's unfortunate when you have to bounce the card because then they get another chance to sing, or not sing, but search another song out. But things like smash being able to take out the aerial also feel just really, really good. Um, Rapunzel has been seeing more play as part of a draw engine. Uh, the Queen package, again, being very strong. Queen and Robin Hood package is paired up pretty universally in this color matchup. Uh, Beast Tragic Hero has been played in most of the list, but not quite all of them. Uh, if you're wondering exactly what's being played, there is a link to a spreadsheet down below with deck cores and winning and some second place lists and a deck like the deck core, what they're playing, ratios, most common ratios. How often they're playing them, uh, tournament results, deckless links, all kinds of good information. Uh, then you got your Robin Hoods, your Cinderellas. Stout Hearted is a absolute tank. Um, this deck doesn't. I mean, you have your you have your along came Zeus to deal five, which will deal three. So I mean, you put three on her with just that, which is really good, but. I mean, she's 5 willpower with resist too. Like, that's just really hard to deal with for anything. Best way to get around her is knowing they're probably only playing 2 or 3. So if they ink one early, that's one gone. And then keeping the smaller Cinderella's off the board to make them actually spend 7 ink to cast her is going to be your best bet. They're going to come out with things like bare necessities. So they're going to see your hand and go after your damage cards. They have their own damage cards. They have the whole new world, which... I'm actually usually okay with. I'm I'm usually not upset when I get by hit by whole new world. So just remember that if you're against steel, 
when you're in that window, just keep an eye out for that whole new world, especially if they can sing it and keep their tempo and then play it and take advantage of it. The grab your swords is something too that's not quite as impactful as like hyper aggro because we have a little more willpower than hyper aggro does. Not quite as fast, but we have a little more willpower. Another deck we are going to talk about, like I said, I kind of got the big four here, the best four decks of the format that we'll talk. Uh, tempo. So what do we do with Tempo? Whether they're coming out with things like the Merfolks, the Flins, the Puas, like their first two turns, they really want to set the pace and quest and get in that like six plus range just because, well, I mean, there's not a whole lot else to say. They're setting the tempo. And then as you try to deal with their tempo, they have things like Hit Cloud Kicker, Mother Knows Best, um, and other bouncing type effects, Rushing with Fox to deal with your board and take you out. So you got to swing that tempo away from them. And things like Smash, Baboom, really help your Smash on their Ursula Deceiver of All so they can't draw four or bounce two is going to be really impactful. Uh, the Baboom on things like Curse Merfolk or Flynn Rider so you don't have to discard to challenge them also going to be very impactful. Uh, just playing it smart like that, like don't trade into them and lose your advantage unless you truly have to because... As an avid Ameth Amethyst Emerald player, the deck can come back so fast. Like, I've put Ursula on board, and, like, you top deck into friends, and you just get four new cards, and all of a sudden just whole deck wide open. Like, and that's not the only way. Obviously, drawing four is going to be a really good example. But even things like quest for a couple, play an Yzma, bounce your own card, draw two, and all of a sudden you're just going off again, and you start being able to play so quickly... Um, just, just keep an eye out for that, like the draw four. So keeping that Ursula off the board, um, not too, too much with evasive genie seeing a little less play, but I mean, in that six drops lap, watch out for the genie on the job too, but Yzma has been seeing more play as of late. And then lastly, we're going to talk about red, blue, blue, red, whatever order you want to put it. So we have multiple turn two bodyguards that are 2-3 stat lines, which helps out in this matchup a lot because they play typically for Queen, so Impulsive Ruler, who can have Rush, and she's a 2-2. Two -two. But by your turn 2, you play your 1-drop, you quest, you drop a Bodyguard. If they play her, they go into the Bodyguard, and the Bodyguard survives, and now you're free to quest, and they lose their Queen. So I think this is not too bad of a matchup. It's a little slow get going. Um... It can get tricky if they have, like, the perfect mid-game hand with things like Maui into, like, be prepared follow-up with Madame Medusa once they slow you down. Like, the this deck can really do good. I feel like it's a little RNG, like, you want to get your ideal opening hand and ramp up and get your Flavisham go and get a couple good draws. And if it works, you're probably winning against any deck in the game. And if it doesn't, well, it depends what deck you're against then. So this deck can still win, but it's kind of, like I said, a little RNG type um, dependent. So that's kind of some of our matchups. Let's go ahead and watch a matchup or two. It's going to be two. Uh, first one against Steel Song. Assuming it's Steel Song. Maybe we shouldn't assume it's Steel Song because we're not playing Steel Song. So we're going first. That's a shocker with Agro. Hood, Kita, Benja, Double Doc, Simba, and our Queen. So we got the wrong shift line in play. Uh, just trying to think what we want. Bare Necessities would be a nice card, but we keep our Doc, our Kita, uh, Robin Hood. We actually hit two Robin Hoods and another Big Queen. We kept the Big Queen and the Robin Hood in case we hit one of the vice versas. In addition, we have a few turns to wait it out, so that's why we kept the Bodyguard. And then at the point where you get to Doc, you can just cheat out the bigger cards cheaper anyway, so I wasn't too worried. So now he does come out with the Cinderella, which again now means he has multiple spells or songs that are going to be live. So we're going to get rid of our bodyguard and throw down and try to be a little more aggressive. Give him a potential different target to go after. He comes down with a Simba, so right when he does that, I'm like, okay, he draws, he's going to discard, but he can still sing a song. So that doesn't necessarily mean 
anything but at the same time maybe he didn't have a song yet and he had to dig for it and then we see him discard the uh, Pluto zero to hero to bring out a Cinderella for free um, I'm feeling really good right now and then he inks another Cinderella so I actually feel really really good here where you can shift into our Robin Hood we can quest we can take out that Cinderella so now his three songs are off the table unless he hard casts them uh, he can't shift into big Cinderella or anything threatening yet. Another Cinderella comes down. Um, not entirely sure if it's actually like a true steel song deck still, because typically I don't see Simba played too often unless he's playing like with cards he actually has. Um, the Chernabog also again kind of throw me off, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like I actually that's why you don't see Beast Tragic Hero in a lot of my list because. When I'm testing for events online and I'm playing online, I know I'm not going to have that card come the event. So why would I test with it and play with it? I want to test without it and get a list without it because I'm not going to have it. So um, he actually ends up scooping pretty quick there. Um, I apologize for this. I didn't realize I didn't edit that part out. There might actually be three replays. So we have... Amber Steel once again. I didn't notice his name to see if it was the same one. However, this time we are going second. We open double Lilo, Robin Hood, Queen, so all kinds of one drops. Big Queen, let the Storm Rage on, and Doc. Well, so we have our Queen Shift line and the Storm Rage on, which is going to be really helpful. Keep the Robin Hood in case we hit the big one, and the Doc. We get rid of our two uninkable cards, and we hit two inkable cards. So again, very helpful. Uh, we see a Rapunzel go away. No turn one come down and we draw our key up. We're going to get rid of our Wendy because, well, we just don't really need her. Uh, we're going to go Queen because, again, if he plays a character, we can shift Queen, play the Storm Rage on, take it out, draw a card. He actually does not, and we draw into another Queen. I'm like, okay, so what do I want to do now? It's like, I feel like I'm going to be far enough ahead. We can get rid of the Kita. And then come back with two more ones. In case he does something like to hard get rid of our queen, we have a second one that we're for sure getting our big queen out no matter what. He ends up coming down with his dock. So I'm like, okay, we're in a pretty simple spot now. And I'm like, oh, queen. And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, maybe I don't. I'm like, I'm going to go with my own dock and try to wait on the queen until I can truly take advantage of it where... We shift her, quest with her, go plus four, minus four, and take out his character. Instead of just throwing her down to gain that one extra lore. Because essentially if we did it there, we'd be at five. And then say if he has something like Smash, well, we just lost our big queen before we ever get to use her. Let the Storm Rage on takes out our Robin Hood because, well, it's kind of pointless to take out the queen. We have two of them. He comes out with a bodyguard, which is actually pretty good for him. Also, the bodyguard would survive the Smash if we get to that point. We're going to ink our uh, Keto once again, just to be able to keep our ink going forward. Uh, and then we're going to quest with our Doc so we can get out our Queen one cheaper. And then we're going to go plus four, minus four with our Queen and the Prince. So now we can take Prince out in one swing with taking zero damage. And then we can play our Smash and get rid of his Doc. So essentially, advantage-wise, we're even. However, we're at 8-0 with a much better board presence. He does come down with the aerial then, which always hurts after you get rid of your smash like that. So something like uh, he actually gets rid of the other aerial, which is interesting to me. I like when you can get two aerials rolling. It just it's so nice. Uh, Doc, we're gonna put two damage on and draw a card, and then we're gonna ink, play our Robin Hood. Uh, so essentially at this point too, like if he has whole new world, what what's he gonna do? Give us an entire free hand with it, which. Like, I, don't, I just don't think it'd be smart on his part. Uh, we get rid of Akita and wait to see what he does. Grab Your Swords is not super impactful. Beast Tragic Hero, however, that's actually a decent card to play at this point. So get him some more resources. However, at that point, too, we have seven more. We go to 18. So Amber, or Amber Ruby, not Emerald, uh, Mufasa. We are going first. We are so lucky. We're going first multiple times never happens um so this matchup bare necessities is essentially useless but boom could be helpful we got some ones we got bodyguard we got doc benja i mean he's a two quester but we're not really worried about items maybe they'll play like a lantern or something but again not too worried about it 
we hit another Lilo and Akita. So we're going to go really aggressive here. We get rid of our queen, play our Lilo. Waiting to see what he does because we have Bodyguard and Baboom as our two comeback play options. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Officer Grammar. Do you guys like it at this speed where it's slightly slower than I used to do? We see Dot go away and Queen come down. I did change it just for the fact that uh, we drew another Bodyguard so we get to play the one and then we can go ahead Bodyguard. And leave the queen there. If he's going to shift the other queen, I'm okay with it at the moment. Um, but I used to go like 200 to 250%. And I was stopping it a lot to get caught up and talk about it. Whereas right now like 150, it seems like I usually don't have to stop it here or there. And talking about the mulligans. But other than that, not too bad. Also guys, I am working on some videos where... We have over 30 top two finish like Ruby Amethyst list. We're going to go through and talk about the deck core, why the deck's doing good, which cards are seeing the most play, which cards are just being not played much at all and going over it. Not really a replay, but more of a competitive look inside of the deck and why it's seeing the success that it is. Let me know down below if that's something you're actually interested in. We're going to try it out and hopefully it takes off. We'll probably start with like red, blue, or steel resist sapphire steel resist because if we start with ruby amethyst people are gonna be like uh ruby amethyst and probably not watch so we'll start with a little bit more interesting video uh just because i want to cater to you guys uh we're gonna get rid of that queen i hope we do come on i know this replay is from the other night and i don't necessarily remember a ton of it but there's no reason not to get rid of the queen because the plus four minus four with the Pluto hurts if you don't. So we go to 10. Okay, I was going to say, I'm like, why am I sitting here debating it? I was like, I know you do it. There's no reason not to do it. So he has the Pluto. He's going to exert it so he can pay one less. So we're up to a four cost card. We're in a pretty commanding spot. He plays a Stylish Surfer and inks a Mufasa. Um, I don't get why you don't just quest with the Pluto. Because at least you would get one more point. Uh, we throw it on our two cards. We take out the Pluto. We gain two lore. And then we go quest, quest, quest. Up to 16. And there's really nothing he's going to be able to do. Um, yeah, I don't know why you just exert that Pluto there. Because it's not going to do anything. Uh, we see another Surfer Mini come down. And then our turn. So we can go ahead. Quest. Quest. Well, play it just to show him. And then quest. And that's going to be the game. So, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time. Oh, sorry, you got to see all that. What is going on? Do we have another replay? Okay, we got another replay. I really dropped the ball on that one. Okay, here we go again. We are back. Ah, going first against Red Blue. We have a long game Zeus, Doc, Lilo, Benja, Lilo, Benja, and Robin Hood. I actually like double Lilo in this matchup because typically it's not uncommon to get, like, a few turns. Um, instead of liking it i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of one of them and luckily enough we hit a robin hood again playing these though i was up to like 3 a.m playing and recording stuff so i'm gonna say that's why i made some questionable choices or it's just because i mean you know we're all human we all don't play the best at times that just happens but again you get typically now like turn two here he could come down with that queen that we mentioned earlier with rush but he doesn't and other than queen, they usually don't have much for um, two drops. They'll like play a second popsicle or develop your brain and just kind of use them first two draws, two turns to draw and build their hand up. Uh, double Benja is going to be really nice here too. because So he inks here, he's going to play a card, and then next turn he actually doesn't even get to play a three drop. So that really puts him behind. Uh, we can go right up to ten, um, and you could say, oh, you got your Robin Hood, right? But... I want to play the Benja because I don't want a Flavisham to come down here and then get him to draw two. So we get to go to 10 anyway, and he doesn't get to draw two. So that's the main reason why we went Benja, not Robin Hood. And we see a McDuck Manor get inked. And then a McDuck Manor get played. We're up to 10 with seven on board. So I'm really, really not worried about this at all. We quest, put the other dock down, quest, and quest. 
we're sitting at 17 and there's nothing he's going to be able to do. Like there's no way, there's no card in his deck that gets him to the win. So now this time we're done and we get to see a whole bunch of decks and all that other good stuff that I usually cut out of these videos. Behind the scenes look guys, you get a behind the scenes look. But yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Until next time, like, share, subscribe, comment down below. We got all kinds of good stuff working on the announcements for our next month's giveaways there will be again one for the channel one for the patreons first friday of every month we're gonna do the giveaway this time we have the enchanted rakita and that beast tragic hero so april 5th i think it was april 5th is that friday so this friday coming up a few days we will reveal who won those cards but thanks for watching guys and until next time take care